Here at Gundam Planet, we're all about keeping it real. And that was a horrible pun. But in all seriousness, I've been building a lot of high grades recently, and I kind of miss tiny parts and ridiculously overly intricate details and all that. So I'm back at the real grade line with the Sinanju. Now, we all saw this, and we all saw it get announced, and, I, and don't lie, the first thought that you had was, oh boy, sleeve marking stickers. And, uh, you know, I thought that, and I'm pretty sure everyone thought that. And then, and then this thing, it, we saw more pictures for it, and then they showed off that gold runner. And I think we all started taking it a little bit more seriously, myself included. So, even though I'm on record saying that I like the Stein better, I'm here to build the real grade Zananju. So, I built the high grade of this, and uh, I think that's going to be a pretty good, uh, pretty good comparison point. Because we start off with this box that is literally the size of a Master Grade Gundam X, with a million more parts. So this thing is going to be no joke, and we're just going to get right down to it. We start with the real grade sticker sheet, which, mercifully, there are only like 45. So it's they're they're getting a little bit better with these. There are actually none of those little tiny caution things with the circle in the top left or top right. You know what I'm talking about. None of those. Um, it's, it's all just these cool lines that you see all over it. So that's good. They're keeping it keeping it simple. Then we have the black. This is your pretty average black plastic, but like all of these sleeves, like the Neo Zeon markings, are all cut out. So that's really cool. Really good. Like in the neck, you can even see that it's cut out there. Really good. There, the, this mold is incredible. Um, we got standard inner frame. So we're just gonna keep moving. This actually looks a lot like the Master Grade inner frame. The way they're doing this, so it's gonna be interesting to see the way they kind of layer this over the the pre-assembled real grade frame that comes in all of them. Uh, more more inner frames. Keep on going. Really cool effect parts. Holy cow, these are awesome. I, lo I love the symmetrical beam axe and the fact that it comes with all these different ways you can display it. And this is really cool, like fluorescent yellow green. I like that a lot. And here, here's what I was talking about. This gold. These aren't stickers, these are all, oh my goodness, they look fantastic. And they're all just going to go so nicely layered on everything, I hope. That's what I'm here to find out. Now, it doesn't look like they're, uh, some of them are undergated. So I'm guessing they did that strategically with which ones are going to be facing out. So even though not all of them are, shouldn't be a problem. And then from, from the highs we go to the lows. What is this? I hate it. I hate when they do this. When there's gold or some kind of gold, like in the Banshee, you have this and like the little leg vents. And this is awful. I hate this yellow. I wish it was gold. And now we have some shampoo silver. Don't know what this is, don't know how this differs from the inner frame, so gonna find that out too. I don't hate this quite as much, because, you know, I guess not everything can be plated, you know. Cut cut expenses where you have to. To, to be honest, the kit this size with this many runners already, that's 3,800 yen, pretty, pretty incredible. So now we have the inner frame, which is completely different, of course, from any other real great inner frame that you've seen. So that, that goes without saying. Runner A has the cool little thing for the mono eye, all the thruster tanks. This white is, uh, you know, it's, it's not too glossy, it's just there. We got the gray for the weapons, pretty standard. And now we come to the good part, because this red is, is really something. I, the, the gloss finish on this, you probably don't even need to top coat this, you can. If you top coat anything other than gloss, I'll probably be mad at you, because it just looks insane. All the little all the little tiny details on this, the spikes on this arm part are just I think that's a shoulder actually. But anyway, like whew, I'm gonna be interested to see how the nubs look on this, but honestly it looks good enough, I'm not super concerned. And just wow, all these parts look so sharp. Oh you got a little little tiny full frontal. So you get all the goods, the head looks great, the the mold is just so so fantastic, I really can't believe it. I'm I'm incredibly impressed so far. Like I said, I'm, I'm here to build this. And then we got some soft inner frame. This feels just like the Stein's inner frame, and some of the parts kind of look like it too. So we're gonna we're gonna see if this holds up to my impressions of that. And then thank you for doing the sticker guide the way the way that is logical and uh, not doing these weird like picture ones. So that's good. That'll be nice and easy to follow. We got so many instructions, this is probably going to take me forever, what have I gotten myself into? We're going to do the backpack and shield first, of course, and um, yep, you, you, wanted, you, wanted a, you wanted the bazooka? Well you got, you got, got, got to get the Pete Andai set, because that's what they're doing. I wonder if it'll come with water slide decals. 
I haven't looked yet, but um, you know, leave it to these guys to make you spend even more money after this. But I digress. I'm I'm like very excited for this and this. And I hope that the final product reflects how great these look out of the box. So here here we go. Ooh boy, this thing like whoa man. So. Right off the bat, there's a lot of stuff I want to say about this, so I'm gonna we're, we're gonna save like reviewing the kit itself for when we get up close with it because there there are a lot of gimmicks going on, a lot of stuff going on. So um, to start, here at Gundam Planet, we always try to not let outside influences affect our opinion of the kit. Like we want to build it, we want to get our own idea of it, we want to tell you exactly what we think of it, and we always try and stay completely neutral and just avoid hearing what other people have to say. Now, in this case, it was actually impossible for me not to avoid just the vitriol that was being spewed by everyone about this kit. Like, I, I would have assumed that I would build it and it would instantly murder me. It's just, com like, I would, I would take it out and start building it and, and, and someone would come over and be like, I heard that thing was terrible. And it's like, alright, so I, I wasn't even halfway done with it by the time I started hearing all those things, so I was already thinking, like, oh, what am I going to say about this? Like you know, looking at it with a really critical eye, and as I was putting it together, I was like, waiting for it to become the devil, and it never did. So, um, I did notice a couple things that might turn you off to it, and, and so I wanted to point those out. The first thing, you might notice the plastic is incredibly shiny, it's gloss injected, so it's much, much more solid, much harder to work with than most plastics, and on top of that, some of the gates are unnecessarily thick. I couldn't really figure out why, but some of, like, the gates up here, they left more marks because they were so much thicker when a piece with similar size, these shoulder binders, had like really small gates, so I don't know why if they could minimize it on some parts they couldn't on other, so that's one thing. Um, another thing, uh, I heard that it was really loose. A lot of this, the, a lot of the assembly, you actually have to like keep pushing parts together until you hear a snap, and I'm not sure if some people aren't getting that far, um, because like you might be nervous that it was going to break. I was kind of nervous it was going to break, but I just decided to go for it because everything fits so tightly because it's engineered so precisely that in a lot of cases you might be scared to push that extra step. So, um, you know, make sure that if it, if it can click, if there's still a little gap, make sure that it's, it's closing as much as it can. Um, and and on, the, on the same note as that, you don't want to get lazy with the nubs on this. You need to shave everything down as far and as close to the plastic as you possibly can because otherwise that extra little like millimeter of plastic might get in the way of, of mechanisms like that or, that are at work. Uh, and the, another thing was that the black plastic on these sleeves markings, a lot of time the nubs were placed in like very inopportune spots, like on curves. Um, sometimes it was actually hard to differentiate where the gate started, where the part ended. So just be very careful. Make sure to leave like a pretty substantial nub so that you can tell when you do go into the process of shaving it down. Um, and, and you know, hopefully that'll help you out. Other than that, this thing is, is like really incredible. The stability issues that I've been hearing a lot out of, you might see he, he's Mr. Bobblehead up here. It's because they tried to do this weird thing with the torso where there's actually a double hinge that like, it folds down like this and the waist is down here, the torso is up here and it allows it to do this. So you get this like telescoping effect where he can go way forward, way back. And as nice as that is with a backpack this heavy, that's why you see him leaning already. So that's where a lot of those issues come from, and it makes it kind of hard for him to stand. Like, he's doing pretty well right now, but um, put this guy on an action base. If you have him standing, it's just like, what's, what's the point? You know, put him on an action base. That's what you got him for. And lastly, there are some loose parts. The, the, I guarantee you, over the course of our close-up, this toe piece will fall off 100%. This knee piece also might fall off, but the good thing is they're very easy to put back on. There's really no struggle involved in that. So, um, you know, that that is basically all I had to say about this, other than what the finished product looks like. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna get up close so that I can talk to you about that. All right, so here we have the man. Usually I start with the accessories, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna leave him over here. We're gonna, we're gonna get right into this guy because there's so much going on. And I'm gonna start with the backpack so that I can show you what's going on and then take it off so that I can show you the torso articulation. So, you know, like every Sinanju backpack, you got these, these thruster tanks move. That's the least of what's going on here. What we're here for is these thrusters, which you can see, you get some really great articulation out of these. They move all the way, any way you want them. And they also have limited um, up and down articulation like this. So, you know, really boost in any direction, that's fine. And then each side, you can lift this up, you can take this down, and then you can spread these out so that you get this really insane dynamic look out of a backpack that usually doesn't have quite this much going on. So I really like that. 
And uh, that's all there is to say about the backpack. And then it, it slots in in the back and then slides down so that you can just take it out whenever you want. So that's what I'm gonna do. Now you've seen that, now you see this. We're gonna go from the top down. The head, pretty good articulation, despite the fact that you have these sleeves markings here that like, you know, the he popped his collar. So we got that, he can look left, he can look right, he can look up, he can do pretty much whatever he wants because the ball peg is on a hinge so he can go like this. That's very nice. I like that a lot. Now for the shoulders, you can see you get good articulation up. It also has these, um, I don't really care for them, but you can articulate this split armor on the shoulders so that it, it gives it, you know, hatch open. We got the hatches open again, guys. Man, I can't wait to open all these hatches. So, you know, whatever, you got that. Um, the arms don't really come into the sides very far because of the way that the shoulders are up. So, you know, if you, if you want them standing elbows in, like this guy can't be a Kimbo. Uh, sorry about that. So that's the shoulders. Arms, of course, you get all the way around. You get really nice bend out of the elbow. And then also you can see this break right here. You get this, you can put the beam saber in there. So that's completely intentional and very awesome. Like I'm very, the, the arm separation is insane. The way that these sleeves markings come together, like right here when you're putting it together, uh, this this really really impressed me the way that they make it look seamless even though it's not so that that goes for both arms the torso you got this thing well first this can pop up and the, co the cockpit can open and you got all these crazy dynamic hatches but I don't really care about that to be honest the torso you can turn it all the way left, all the way right, and then this is where the wiggles happen, because right here you can see, I don't know how well you can see it, but in there, there's this crazy like triple joint mechanism that lets him get all the way back and all the way forward, and it's not super stable. Like, I'm not sure why you need a brake like this, but you have it, and uh, you know, that design choice might be to blame for why a lot of people think this is loose. Because like, look at that, what other model kit do you know that does that? Um, so, you know, it's pretty cool, but wholly unnecessary. And with the backpack as heavy as it is, that uh, could probably turn some people off from this. So now down to the waist, the way the side skirts are like hooked together. So you don't get crazy dynamic, like up and down out of this, but it's enough. Like it comes out pretty far. Um, you get some you get some gimmicks here where like this opens up and then can close again So they're just going they're just going all in with the hatches open Now we finally arrive at the legs I'm gonna do these thrusters first because these pop out swivel all the way around and then you get this really nice break here I really like that um, You know you get that on both sides the knee you get the really cool articulated knee just like this non juice sign um, With the way that it pops out in this multiple break and then just goes right back in so you know, the legs are very stable, it's just the torso is where the issues come from. And then the problem is the toes, because the toes, he's in space, so he's designed to do like this. You see, this is absolutely no problem. This, however, is a big problem, and it happens constantly. So, extra thin cement on there, you don't have to worry about it. It's just like, it's, it's literally that one point of articulation that constantly gives me trouble. So, that's the guy. The accessories you get are also very nice. You get these, the beam axes with the effects. These can come apart. You can hold them individually or together. Of course it looks cooler together though. That just snaps right into his hand. Then you get the rifle, which has this nice grenade launcher gimmick where you can articulate that down and then close it back up. And then you have rifle with grenade launcher. So I like that a lot. Then you get these, which as I showed you, can either go into the wrist or they give you two beam saber handles so that he can hold them. And then the shield, which this is like absolutely flawless. The way that this looks, I, I can't believe how amazing it looks. It, the, the sleeves markings just like, oh boy. I know I called them gaudy in my Sinanji Stein review, but like, you know, maybe, maybe I'm into that. I don't know. And then you get the, the short beam axe effect parts, which you can just put on there also if you want. Then you get one left splayed hand. That's the only interchangeable hand you get, um, but I guess that's to hold the rifle supporting it. You know, it really doesn't look bad with these. They do still give you these awful normal real grade hands for no reason. I really don't like them. I only built one just to show you guys that it's even there. And then tiny, tiny little full frontal with hand on his hip because he knows he has, he means business. And then that's, that's the, the, the whole thing. There you go. Like, like, geez, there's a lot going on. And for, for a kit this price, we have $42 for this thing. This thing puts the master grade to shame. These, the, the way that the sleeves marking come together is just, it's an absolute joy 
to watch the way that all this gold just like, oh my gosh, you're gonna see it in the spinning base shots with the lights up close. It is stunning the way this looks. It's really hard to grasp like how much better this is than any other Sinanji that they've made. I did a little side-by-side -side comparison of the high grade. No, I didn't put stickers on that one because I hate the way those look, but you'll just get to see the difference in the plastic. It's really incredible. One thing I didn't mention before that I do wanna say, I like to build my kits in, an, in a certain order. You go legs, waist, torso, arms, head. You have to build this in the order they tell you because once you get halfway through the torso, you have to put the arms on because of the way it goes together. So like, you know, you can still build the accessories first like like you always should, but um, you know, you, you kind of do get railroaded into doing things a certain way. But if you do it the way you're supposed to and you really, you know, put put some time, put some effort into it, put, put some effort into the stickers, which also, I didn't mention before, they're mercifully few and they're mercifully large. And they were very quick and very easy, partially thanks to the help of this great little guy, uh, this, this mirror stand. If, you don't, if you've never used one of these, it just makes it so much easier to deal with all real grades, all water slides. I will put a link to that in the description so that you can see what's up. But, but like, man, this thing was not as bad as everyone said. And if, you, if you're on the fence about it, there's really no reason not to just give it a shot because no matter what you think of the stability or the build, you can't deny that this is like absolutely stunning. It is just eye-catching, it is incredible. If you get this in a pose you like and put it on your shelf, like holy cow, it doesn't get a better Sinanji than this. So really, really, I just, I can't not recommend this. If you like real grades, do it. Alright guys, thank you so much for listening to all of my words. I had a lot of words about this guy, and maybe you have a lot of words about this guy. We've sold a lot of this guy, so I think a lot of you watching this probably have given it a shot, and I want to know your impressions. So leave them in the comments, I'll talk to you about it, because I'm very interested to know what is, what is wrong with this from, from a lot of people's point of view. As always, you should like, comment, subscribe if you want to see us do more of these. You should check out Marsh Sound SoundCloud in the description. I know a lot of you guys like the spinny bass music, go listen to more of it. and. Uh, you know, uh, check out the other videos that we've done and we'll see you next time.